welcome everyone. Today is January the 17th, believe it or not. We're, we're rolling right into February. And uh, like I said, we have a great agenda tonight. We are recording tonight's meeting um, for archive purposes, but it's also being streamed live on City Mass and YouTube channel. So I want to welcome everybody here. Uh, as typical with each of our city council meetings, we will begin by uh, standing and removing our hats and reciting a Lord's Prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we'll get into tonight's business. Thank you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's great to see so many people here tonight, and we'll ask the uh, clerk treasurer Rampy for a roll call. Good evening, Council. Tevinoff? Here. Krebs? Here. Lucy Dottillo? Here. Schaefer? Here. Chatham? Here. Bartlett? Here. And Dan Dottillo? Here. Thank you. Council, have you had an opportunity to review the minutes from the last meeting dated January the 3rd? If so, we'll entertain a motion to approve minutes. I move to approve the minutes from January 3rd as written. I will second that. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Moving on. Uh, presentation petitions, memorials, remonstrators, introduction motions and guests. Um, nothing there. And uh, we'll move on to uh, our two bills on first reading. And we'll get to the rest of business. First bill on first reading is ordinance number... 2023-1, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, establishing the Paul Braun Grant Non-Reverting Fund. Whereas the State Board of Accounts in their June 2020 Cities and Towns Bulletins has stated that a separate, separate fund for each grant is required, and whereas the City of Madison has entered into a grant agreement with the National Park Service, and whereas the City of Madison wishes to establish a fund to deposit funds and pay expenses related to the National Park Service Paul Braun Grant. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, as follows. An account is established for the purposes of depositing monies from the granting agency, appropriations from the city's accounts, and from any other lawful source for paying or required obligations for the City of Madison on the accepted grant. The account shall be named the Paul Braun Grant Non-Reverting Fund, and all funds contained in the account shall be expended only for the exclusive purpose of paying expenses relating to the grant. The account shall be non-reverting and exist, per exist perpetually unless terminated by a subsequent ordinance enacted by the Common Council. If the account is terminated by a subsequent ordinance enacted by the Common Council, the remaining balance of the terminated <coughs> account shall revert to the general budget of the Common Council. This is sponsored by Councilwoman Krebs. The next ordinance on first reading is ordinance number 2023-2. As an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, and making the zoning map of the City of Madison, Indiana. Whereas there has been a recommendation made by the City of Madison Plan Commission to the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana to amend the zoning map of the City of Madison, Indiana. Whereas the Madison Plan Commission has voted to recommend to the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana that the zoning map of the following described property be changed from general business to light manufacturing, and that is 3122 Clifty Drive and 3134 Clifty Drive. Whereas it is in the best interest of the citizens of Madison, Indiana, that the zoning of the map be amended accordingly. And whereas the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana concurs with the recommendations submitted to it by the Plan Commission. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, that Section 1, the City of Madison zoning map, be amended so that the following zoning for the following described property be changed from general business to light manufacturing. And that's the same addresses that I read above. Section 2, this ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after this date. Those are both on first reading, and they will go on to second reading at the next um, 
meeting unless there is um, a motion to do otherwise. And council, the application that was presented at plan commission, Councilman Seminole is on plan commission. It's also included in your package, so you can review that uh, for discussion at the next meeting. Council, are there any reports, recommendations, and other business from standing or select study committees of the city council? Hearing none, we'll move on to our reports of city officials. I'd like to invite Massive Police Department Chief John Walsh to give a report. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council. A few notes from the department I'll go over before getting into the uh, to the year-end results. Uh, we have uh, four openings at the police department. Uh, two were created by uh, Ben Flint, uh, being elected Jersey County Sheriff, and with the announcement of uh, Captain Dan Sly retiring from the Madison Police Department as of January 22nd of this year with 22 years of service. Uh, Dan will be leaving us to go to the Indiana Gaming Commission. Uh, we appreciate all his years of service to the police department, and I believe we'll be recognizing him at the uh, at the next city council meeting. So we wish him the best. The four that we've offered the conditional offers of employment to are Jordan Blakemore, Colton Fox, Cody Short, and Aaron I. Watson Jr., who is the son of Aaron Watson, who's currently serving on the police department. So we'll have a uh, have a father son combination. Uh, I know we had a brother combination with the Tingle Boys back in the day, but I don't know that. Well, we, we did have a father son with Kenny Jones Jr. and Sr. So um, we, <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I'm not sure if they were there at the same time or not, but uh, looking forward to it. Uh, Aaron's a fine young man as, as well as uh, Jordan Blakemore, Colton Fox, and Cody Short. So we're uh, getting them up and running. Uh, hopefully we get them to the academy in May. We have them scheduled. Uh, so we'll bring them on probably a, a month or so beforehand, uh, kind of get them acclimated to the department. Uh, to uniforms, get everything squared away, so when they come back, they can hit the ground running in our in our field training program. Uh, we did receive uh, today a seventy-six hundred dollar grant from uh, JCJ TAP, which is Jersey County Justice Treatment and Prevention Program, uh, for our canine program. So money well needed and and, and be well spent uh, in that program. I believe maybe you have I believe you have in front of you our yearly stats from. Uh, 2022, and I do have some uh, differences from 2021 that uh, I'd like to point out to the council. In uh, 21, we had a total of 11,627 calls, and uh, we had an increase to 12, 833, which is an increase again of uh, over 1,200 or yeah, 1,206 calls. Our arrests were up 43. Our citations were up 830. Our warnings were up 1,892. Our parking complaints were actually down 53. Traffic stops, this is kind of an eye opener. Our traffic stops were up 2,800 from 2021. Speeding complaints were down by 37. Drug related calls were down by 108. We never really know what to look at to see how we are doing with, the, with our continuing battle against uh, drugs in our community. But I would think, you know, that would be a number that certainly would be eye-opening and trending in the right direction and, and hopefully showing progress. Another one that I'm, that I'm happy about is our B&E theft from businesses, residents, and others is actually down 88 from the year before. We always have spoke of as we battle narcotics and make narcotic arrest and uh, take drug dealers and drug users off the streets, uh, our property crime should decrease. And that's, you know, pointed in that direction. So we'll continue to, uh, to do what we've been doing and that's be aggressive with our drug dealers and, and our drug users. Overdose calls were 23. Now we didn't have a record. That was something new we started keeping this year. So I don't really have a lot to, to compare that to. And that, you know, that's kind of a tough number. To really keep track of. I mean, there's overdoses that, you know, maybe go into the hospital that we're not aware of and those type of things, but those are just the calls that the, that we had. Another call that I want to try to keep track of this year was mental health calls. Uh, quite often, you know, we get calls of individuals acting bizarre, strange, or whatever it may be, maybe in some kind of mental, mental health issue crisis, uh, and we responded to 84 of those this year. Uh, 
again, that was a newer number that we started keeping and um, didn't really have anything to compare it to. We started late this year uh, keeping track, and we got a new app for our K-9 program. Uh, so Colt, for instance, he's one of our one of our busiest uh, K-9s. He actually had 47 or involved in 47 arrests this year involving narcotics. So we'll be able to track them better with all of our dogs and also give you amount numbers uh, as far as the uh, amount of drugs that are seized and the, uh, the financial gain that we've taken off the streets away from these dealers when we when we make these arrests so we'll continue to tweak our numbers and try to try to give you the best view that we can on you know what we're doing but uh, uh, again a busy year that uh, total calls up uh, 1206 majority of that's related to just uh, being proactive out on the streets with the traffic stops and, and working on the uh, on the complaints that we receive throughout the community and with that I have Chief, I would say that you've had a busy year in 2022, and the cause and effect here is uh, more focus on drug interdiction, which is actually reducing drug-related crime, and more focus on traffic-related uh, issues. And while you know citations and warnings are up, uh, complaints about speeding, which is always a problem across a town, seem to be subsiding a little bit. So sure. we're definitely in the going in the right direction with things that are very important to the community. And I think uh, the parking complaints uh, down 53 uh, would also indicate the actions that we're trying to take with uh, abandoned vehicles or vehicles that are left for extended period of times in areas which they shouldn't be. So I know we got a long way to go and I know each council person hears a, a phone call probably daily about speeding or, or vehicle complaints and, and whatever, but uh, we're giving it our best and we'll keep trying to improve until, uh, you know, It'll never be perfect, but we'll keep working at it. Chief, all, all four of the new recruits you're saying need to go to the academy? That's correct, yes. Yeah. We, uh, so it'll be, you know, later this year before they are really introduced uh, yes. to field training here locally. That's correct. Being productive, but uh, we need to continue to make that investment. Absolutely. Yes, sir. That's all I have, Council, unless you have something for me. <coughs> Industry officer slides through the 22nd, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, his, uh, his retirement date will be uh, um, January 22nd. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right, well, our uh, second uh, staff report will come from uh, Mass and Fire Department Chief Ken Washer. Thank you, Mayor. Evening, Council. In your packet, you should have our year-end report for the fire department, which was a typical year, busy as usual. Overall, we had 387 responses or calls last year. Of those, some of the key ones, structure or room fires, we had 19 of those. Fire alarms, 74. Rescue related, 15, whether that be high angle, extrication out of a vehicle or things of that nature. And EMS related, we had 110, which we were primary response or lifting assistance or things of that nature. So that's the gist of our responses last year. Training, overall as a department, we had 2,477 hours. For a volunteer department, that is extremely well. Our community risk reduction, we installed over 200 smoke detectors last year in private residence. We have a program in conjunction with the Red Cross that the smoke detectors don't cost us anything, and we get the detectors that have the 10-year battery in them so that we don't have to worry about the people uh, changing the batteries out in them for getting to. So they're good for 10 years. 162 commercial inspections. Everything from the schools to restaurants, apartment houses, we done 162 inspections on those last years. Some of the things that weren't in your packet that I'd like to touch on tonight, that is also community risk reduction, Fire Prevention Week, 
City of Madison firefighters go to every school in the City of Madison and put on a program for the kids every year. The men and women take their time because we think that that's important. They're taught to stop, drop, and roll. They're taught how to stay down low, have a meeting place. We go through all of it with the kids. We try to train them young and get them in while we can. Festival coverage. That's starting again before long. And the City of Madison firefighters were at every festival last year. Whether they're providing EMR coverage or fire protection in the pit area, the firefighters are on the job. Chief, on that note, I think last year we had 45 events across the community. Yes, sir. Uh, it, was, it was a lot. I mean, it's almost every weekend. Yes. And that's, and that's something that a lot of times is overlooked. Um, when it's in the middle of summertime, um, EMRs on that mule, and a lot of times it's, no, it's something as simple as handing out bottles of water to people. But we're there on the job doing it. Those are the key points for the fire department. I would ask at this time, before I go into a special presentation, if the council has any questions for me. How many uh, volunteer firefighters do we have currently? 110. And what month is the fire prevention week where you go out and October. do October. Thank you. And that, Councilman Chatterman, Hopefully that's going to be going up by four here very shortly. You want to talk a little bit about the uh, mutual assist agreements that we have because you're also responding uh, potentially outside of we, the city of Madison with the township fire department. We have more than one mutual aid agreement. Uh -huh. We have mutual aid agreement with Rikers Ridge Amoth Madison Township. Um, we will go any place in the surrounding area. We, we back them up on the hilltop on structures. Um, we go out to the factories that are outside the city limits. We go to the park numerous times for our high angle rescue. Um, sometimes it's as simple as walking to the mountain, sometimes it's not. Uh, it just depends on what they've gotten themselves into. Um, we not only stay in the state of Indiana, we go across the river. We have a mutual agreement with Milton. We have uh, been first on scene on more than one occasion over there. And vice versa, when we have a they are emergency they will on come the river, and help us. They have the, they have the they have equipment. Not only there, but they'll come here. Yeah. If we, they're a phone call away. If we need them here, uh, they're a phone call away. Um, we are looking at a rescue craft in the future. For the city of Madison Fire Department, um, that's something that's needed. The closest rescue craft to this area is either Louisville, Kentucky, or Gent, Kentucky. That's the closest thing we have as far as a true rescue fire suppression craft. So that's hopefully in the future for the fire department. Um, Milton has been there countless number of times uh, when we've had people on the bridge and things of that nature with their rescue little rescue boat. Um, but yes, we do have quite a few mutual aid agreements. Uh, we also have mutual aid agreement with Hanover. Uh, if the one of the taller structures in the college out there gets on fire, we will respond to Quint out there automatically to that. And same if we need them, they will respond with us. Another very busy and robust year. And as I've said before, when you're not responding, you're training. Yes, sir. And uh, look at the hours that have been um, committed by our volunteer firemen over the course of a year. Any other questions from the council before we get into the presentation of these awards that we've come up with tonight? Okay, good. Now we get to the fun part. As I said, and I've got to look it up because I forget every time exactly the number of hours. 2,477 <coughs> training hours for the department. <clears throat> the chief officer staff got together and we wanted to come up with a way of rewarding the people that train 
and come to the fires. So we come up with, number one, each firefighter in the city of Madison to be an active firefighter has to have 12 structural firefighting hours of training per year. He has to have his hazmat, hazmat update along with everything that OSHA requires. So the average firefighter must do a minimum of 20 hours a year, roughly. Now, if you are in rescue, there's an additional four hours. If you are in the hazardous material station, there's another four hours. If you're an officer, there's another 10 hours. So the higher up you go, the more training you have to do, the more responsibility you get, the more training you have to do. <coughs> With that being said, we have some members that go so far beyond, above and beyond. We have training, we have some members close to 100 hours of training. We have some members that have attended 100 fires this year, 100 calls they made. Now that's above and beyond their normal job and their commitments to their families and everything else. They have done that. So we got our heads together and we come up with, well, how are we going, how are we going to award these people? Well, number one, right off the bat, we didn't want to call it first and second place because these people have done so much. There is no, no, there is no one in second place here. So come, we come up with top gun and top contender. The top contender is the one that fell just a little bit below the top gun. And like I said, to even be considered for this, you had to complete your 20 hours of training. And these people right here, they had that 20 hours completed by probably March. Mayor, would you please join me in helping Love to. give out these awards? We're going to do our top contenders first. We're going to go by station. So the top contender from station one is John Atkinson. Just hold your applause till the end, please, and we'll give everybody a round. Top contender from station two, B.J. Combs. Hold on just a minute, and you'll get to be back. Top contender from Station 3, Brent O'Neill. <laughs> Station 5, Lauren Marsh. Last, certainly not least, from Station 6, William Schaefer. At least a third. That's next year. <laughs> All right, now our Top Gun Awards. Like I said, some of these uh, guys just are so far above that it's uh, way up there. Station one, Lieutenant Jesse Plummer. Station two. Dad got out of bed in the middle of the night a lot more than son did. Bill, come on up. Bill Combs, station two. Good job, buddy. Station 
Station three. Here's a living example that you're never too old to be a firefighter. Pete Backus. Station five, Mark Ham, come on up. And the guy calling all the shots up at station six, Captain Matlock. Hey, Kenny, I just have one Sir. question. I, and may, maybe it's not station, but what about the fours on Walnut Street? What's the... We had a little bump at the fours. There was a little problem down there with, that uh, some of the training they thought was turned in was not. Um, we couldn't find it. We couldn't verify it. So, unfortunately, we had a little hiccup down there. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that they're going to be here next year, and they might be very first through next year. Um, that was through no fault of their own. Thank you. Okay. Good report. Thank keep you, keep sir. up the good work. We're really proud of you guys. Yeah. Okay, I think we'll move on to the rest of our business on the agenda. And we have ordinance number 22-35. <laughs> An ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, authorizing the issuance of Economic Development Local Tax Revenue Bonds Series 2023 to provide funds for a portion of the cost of the acquisition, construction, and installation of certain improvements to Crystal Beach Pool and addressing other matters connected therewith. And this is on third reading, so we'll have a roll call vote. And this bill was sponsored oh. by uh, Jim Bartlett. And so we'll start with you, Bartlett. Yes. Tevinaugh? Yes. Krebs? Yes. Lucy Dottillo? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Chatham? No. And Dan Dottillo? Yes. Thank you, Council. All right, moving on to our agenda. We have nothing miscellaneous tonight, so uh, we'll open it up to public comments. If anybody would like to address the mayor's office or council, please uh, come to the podium and identify your name and address. And I think, Craig Demery, you're, uh, you're up first. Craig, is Craig here? Have anything you want to say? I'm sorry, we were informed by our council that you wanted to be on the agenda tonight, Craig. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we had a little fun there, Craig. Thank you for uh, playing along with us. But yes, if there is anybody here who would like to address the mayor's office and council, please please come to the podium. How you doing, sir? Pretty good. How are you? Great. Thank you. My name is Michael Fox, and I live at 1119 Wells Drive, and. Uh, we're having a problem with water. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Our neighbor next door to us, I'm not going to mention his name. You can find that pretty easily. <laughs> uh, what's happening is his yard, and this was even during the drought and everything, but it wasn't draining as bad. There's something going on. I don't know if uh, we've had two or three officials from the city come out and look at it and they can't find anything. But the water is standing so much that it's getting into our yard. We sink in, you know, four or five inches on the side of our house. 
and it is constantly running from a pipe that was installed, which I understand is, is illegal on his property. It cannot, uh, a, if it's natural, I can't do anything about it. And I don't know if the city is able to do anything about it, but it's starting to erode the dirt around the streets. Water is seeping, I know it is. The guy came out and looked at it today. He didn't talk to us. He talked to Katie Rampy about it, and he said there's no water seeping under, but when it's dry, water is seeping up through the street Wells on Wells Drive. And, sir, what was the address again? Was it 11? 11, 19, 19 okay. Wells Drive. Okay. And we have lived there 24 years and have never had this problem. So uh, how long has this problem been going on? That it you started collect? right before the cold snap. He just recently then? Yes, okay, yes. Just within but the, the, water, the water has been standing, but not as bad, uh, in his yard. We have no water standing in our yard except for off of his property. And in the, in, in the ditch, we've, like I said, we've lived there 24 years, and, and we have never had this problem before. And the city came out and tested the water to see if there was fluoride in it or something from the city, and they said there was none. Um, and the other guy, the guy who came out today, uh, he said that there was no water seepage underneath the road, but you can tell there is. <laughs> uh, again, he didn't talk to us, you know, or anything, which I think he should have. <laughs> but, you know, that's either here or there. We were home. Um, and I tried to talk to the neighbor. And um, I told him something needs to be done about this because it's on your property. And he cussed me out, you know. And I tried to be as nice and friendly as I could be. And he said he's not paying for it. Well, that's neither here nor there. I just need some advice maybe from the council or from the mayor or somebody of what can be done about it. If anything, it is not runoff. It's constantly standing water. And when it rains, yes, water stands. But it's not rained that much. You know, it has sort of. But this is before it rained. It was standing water in his in his yard, and it's all over his yard. It's even seeping into the neighbors on the other side of him, and uh, it's it's getting pretty bad, especially with the drainage in the front where he put that <coughs> pipe. It's eroding our yard, um, and it's in, in our driveway. And uh, I understand there's laws about this. And I might have to take him to civil court, but I don't know if the city can can help or, or what they can do. So, um, so do you know where the water is coming from? No. He won't spend any money to find out. He has a truck. Ma'am, I could ask if you wouldn't mind if you're going to speak. Please yeah. go to the yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> this is my wife. Cassie Fox. Okay. <laughs> um, he has a privacy fence, and I went on the side of our yard, which is like I'm talking about the east side of our yard near our driveway in our garage and I could actually hear running water it sounded like a spigot that was on spraying and this was like two or three weeks ago and I never did find out I couldn't see where it was coming from but his whole backyard on rabbit lane we have rabbit pictures lanes in back, I don't know if you want to see drives them. in the front by rabbit lane his whole backyard is underwater and then the front since it's kind of on a slope it's down in the ditch that's why it comes over our our um, driveway. It was so bad at Christmas that our that we could hardly drive our car over. Because of the ice. Yeah, the ice was about four or five inches. It was thick. it was thicker than and that. And then the water was still running, so it made a little stream. Trench. It made a huge trench, and every time we got out of our driveway, we hit the bottom of our car on the, on Wells Drive. But it is eroding Wells Drive. It's coming off on the sides, and you can see the cracks. In if you, if you guys would want to see the video, we've got it on her phone. Um, Solving stormwater related drainage issues. It's not stormwater. Is a, uh, if it's, a, a, I, know I it's don't know. I, but I'm just saying is that solving drainage issues, maybe let's start there, Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is, a, is a challenge. 
Yes, I understand that. Yeah, I've, I mean, read, yeah. I've read, I've read, I've read a lot of stuff. Mind. Yeah, he, I, Mr. Fox gave me a call Sunday when I was coaching basketball, and I was mm -hmm. haven't had a chance to return his call. I actually drove by there on Sunday after basketball. Has anybody from the water office been up yes, there? Yes, they've been because there's two a or few uh, springs up the, in that area over on Wells and around by the state park there. Um, there's some springs that I've talked to Ron Guyman about before that mm -hmm. continue to come up in people's yards. So I didn't know if – I don't know if that's an area they weren't aware of or He or will what. not check. Our neighbor will not check where it's coming from. Is it east or west, On the neighbor? E we're yeah, toward so Lanier or Highway 7. Yeah, he's, okay. He's on – We're the fifth house. Yeah. Right he's the fourth. Okay. The, yeah, the issue is going to be whether or not it's natural or whether it's something else. Um, in the law, there's this doctrine called the common enemy doctrine, yes. and they kind of everybody can control the flow of water, and they can, you know, people can <coughs> divert water out of their yard onto their neighbor's yard, and it's it's okay under the law because it's the common enemy doctrine, and water is the common enemy of all, and you mm -hmm. can move it along, and that person can move it along yeah, too. I read, I read up now, on it. Yeah. there is a difference between that and you can't under the law, I believe, called collect it and cast it. So you can't, like, pond it up and then shoot it over to <laughs> what, uh, somebody else's about, yard. What about putting uh, an artificial means in your yard? To well, that would that would be something that's different because that would be a natural thing, or that would be an unnatural right. thing. And so right. that could be something different. You may have – It has, do they, it yeah. has been done. And so, I mean, you could – you know, there may be some kind of a trespass or some kind of a, a claim that you might have there. So – you know, I, I don't know. Um, I think it's fair to, you know, from the city's standpoint, we can still continue to look at we it. We can look and, into and, it and, and investigate. I would also it. ask, I don't know if you've talked to any, uh, you know, the, the Water and Soil Conservation District to see if they have perhaps a map of springs or if you've talked with, uh, you know, a, a landscape architect or an engineer about how do you, or, or uh, uh, a contractor about how do you then capture and Divert yeah. the water back out to a normal drainage so that it's, you know, dispersed. If, if it wasn't bad, I'd just river. let it drain. But it's yeah. constant. I, I believe it's there's a map in the water office of some of those springs. Uh, you definitely check that. Ron Guyman was the one that showed me that on a couple of the ones Is, up. Do you know if there's a spring there? I don't know. We okay. we did. There was some paving done on the other side of Wells Drive all the way around, mm -hmm. and there's a spring right in the middle of the road right after we paved that came back up. <laughs> And right in the – there's four or five in the neighborhood I or mean, in the houses right there. So yeah, we're so close to the state park, I wouldn't doubt it. I, the water department has been out there to test it, yes. and they did not test right. positive for chlorine. Right. So – and then Tony Sorrells was out there today to try to check to see if, if he could figure out where the water was coming from and if there was anything that he could do. And unfortunately, he, he couldn't tell where the water was coming from, only I'm where not, it's coming out. I'm not sure the neighbor is going to let him on his property. <laughs> And, and you're saying, sir, that, that just recently started. So this is yes, a, right before so you Christmas. Think if it was a spring, it would be maybe yeah. happening since you know, yeah, he, since he opened up that pipe, it was clogged off with dirt, and since he's opened up that pipe, it's it's, it's worse. So the pipe isn't new; it's just no. now it's just now yeah. moving water. Right. And we never, like I said, we've lived there 24 years and never had a problem until now. <coughs> so <laughs> there's something going on. Well, we'll investigate the spring okay. aspect of it and talk further with our water department and, okay. and coordinate with Councilman okay. Chatham and, and see I, if we can come up with any recommendations to help you. I want to thank Katie for her help, too. She done, she helped us out an awful lot. So thank you, Katie. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Uh, is there anyone else here who would like to uh, make a public comment? at least Detmer my address is 104 East 3rd I stood here six months ago stating about the unpleasant situation that my husband and I were experiencing of vandalism and harassment as far as I know the vandalism has stopped the harassment is almost on daily circumstances we've tried to correct it We let the person involved on our roof for three days, and it still continues. 
We don't know where else to do. Thank you. Ms. Stetmer, uh, we'll follow up with you on this. I'm sorry that you're having a problem. Uh, we'll do whatever we can to help. Is there anybody else here who would uh, like to address council or mayor's office? All right. Well, I've got a couple of updates uh, I'd like to share, um, particularly uh, quite a bit of activity in today's Board of Public Works and Safety. We approved our first quarter PACE grants, 11 projects, and almost a half a million dollars in uh, new historic preservation occurring across the district, several of which were in our targeted revitalization areas for dilapidated and dangerous property. So I want to uh, continue to thank uh, property owners for the investment that they're making all across town because it is making a big difference in our neighborhoods. After a two or three year long process, we did issue a notice to proceed to the three contractors who were awarded contracts for our uh, 2023 uh, water improvement project. So that occurred today. And uh, we also outlined today an initiative that Tony Steinhardt had been working on for the city, which is a, a services agreement with Duke for energy savings. So we are doing an energy audit on the 900, uh, 902 light uh, public light fixtures that we have across the city and we're estimating that we can reduce our annual costs by converting to uh, LED uh, efficient lighting with Duke uh, reduce our annual cost by about 30 percent as well as capture an over thirty thousand dollar rebate so uh, working on that and then uh, about a week ago at our southern Indiana Re redevelopment authority meeting they approved the final, uh, or I should say, three additional uh, ready destination Madison projects for the city. So we are now in the final stages of getting that money fully allocated by the Indiana Economic Development Commission. And then we will have all five of our destination Madison projects uh, gone through the approval process, two of which are already under construction, and these three will be um, starting construction probably uh, early second quarter of this year. So it's been a very busy last couple of weeks with lots of investment across the community, a lot of co-investment, a lot of leveraging city dollars to make a tremendous impact in the multi-million dollar level for the community. So great things are happening there. Um, I'll pause there before we get to the uh, motion to adjourn, but councils, anything you'd like to add before I make one final comment. Subject to um, hopefully no surprises uh, and final inspections, but uh, we will be coordinating to have the Tuesday, February 7th, 2023 city council meeting in our new space at Crystal Beach. So be on the lookout for, for that. We are continuing to finalize punch list and uh, inspections. Uh, installation of the elevator is nearly complete, but uh, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic here that uh, we will have our February 7th meeting at Crystal Beach and give uh, yourselves and the community who is attending that night an opportunity to see uh, the newly renovated space. So we're gonna keep plugging away to make that come to fruition. And that's all I have for tonight. Appreciate everybody for being here. Is there any, you're moving Debbie, are you moving toward the podium? Oh, you're moving out the door. <laughs> I wanna thank everybody who's here tonight and uh, I'll pause there and if there's anything else, if not, we'll have a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. I second the motion. Any discussion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. John, Congratulations can I see to all of our awardee recipients. Can I see for just one second?